Good afternoon and welcome to today's workshop, Communicating with Google Calendar. This is TFL Librarian Sharon and I'm so happy you were able to join us today. In today's workshop, we're going to be learning how to use Google Calendar to share important dates, reminders, and events with other people. Not only will sharing schedules help us to become better communicators, it'll also help us manage our time. So here's our agenda for today. Effective communication means not only sharing information with others, but also includes establishing trust, setting the scope of our project, and defining expectations. But it's also critical for improving teamwork and building trust. So in today's workshop, we're going to be talking about how to create and share a new calendar, add an event to this calendar, and send invitations via Gmail. In our sample exercise, we're gonna be scheduling a simple event and sharing it with others. If you have an event or meeting that you need to invite people to, or say an activity or a club you participate in, this workshop is for you. So today we're gonna to be practicing how to use Google Calendar in the context of a pretend upcoming event. But you could apply the same skills to many situations, whether at work or at home. For example, you could use Google Calendar to schedule an upcoming family event, a meeting at work, or an appointment. You could then use Gmail to share that calendar, send yourself reminders, and share your calendar with family, friends, or coworkers who need to know your schedule. So first of all, we need to be able to access those applications. So our first step is going to be to sign into our Google account. To do so, we're gonna open a new tab in our browser and go to google.com. If you're not signed in, we're going to click the sign in option at the top right corner of the screen and enter our username and password. Remember that signing into our Google account allows us to access a lot of Google apps that we can use both for work and for personal life. So signing into our Google account is going to allow us to access all the products you see on my screen today. Remember that you do only have to sign in once to be able to access, say, Google Sheets, Docs, Slides, Photos, Forms, Gmail, Calendar, and many more. Once you've signed into your Google account, we're going to use the Google Apps menu to move between apps. That icon is displayed here in the center of the screen, although it's often found at the top right corner of your browser window. So let's start planning our imaginary event using Google Calendar. Digital tools like Google Calendar make it easy to keep all this information organized. Now I'll admit, I love bullet journaling as well, but I have been known to leave my journal at home. The advantage of Google Calendar, of course, is that I could access it from my home computer, my smartphone, and from my work computer. So I'm never without access to my calendar. There are lots of activities that we could schedule as repeat events, say like club meetings, after school sports, volunteering, practice for say music, or even our work schedule. But we could also have one-time events, a haircut, a party, you name it. For today, we're gonna to be inventing an event to schedule. And we're gonna to try to think of something that would need to be shared with others more than once, say like a club meeting, a sport, or volunteering. To navigate there, we're going to first select the Google Apps icon and then find the Google Calendar icon. That's how we'll get started. Doing so will get us to our personal calendar. If you share this calendar with your group, though, they're going to see everything you add, even doctor's appointments, family birthdays, and personal errands. That's a lot of information that you probably don't need to share with other people and frankly may not want to. Creating a new calendar allows you to share information with just a select group of people. For example, your coworkers. To do so, we're gonna find the My Calendar option on the left side of the screen and select the plus button to add other calendars. Once we've done so, you'll notice we have a few different options. For today, we're gonna to click on the Create New Calendar button. So now that we've created a new calendar, we're gonna to have to add a bit of description, including a name for the calendar, something that will make sense to other people. We could add additional information in the description, uh, for example, like what it's for, who it's shared with, uh, how often the group meets, uh, any location information that's important. You'll notice that we're also able to change the time zone. 
and you'll see that you are listed as the owner of this calendar. Once we're ready, we can click Create Calendar. When you plan an event as a group, one person will add the event and then share it with others. Now, think about it. Does it make sense to have one calendar for a group instead of everyone keeping track of their own calendars? Often, yes. It might help avoid confusion. It also means that there's one place to record information instead of several, which will help improve accuracy. So now we're gonna add an, our event to our newly created calendar. You'll notice at the top of your calendar, we have the option to change how it displays, including do we want to see specific days, do we want to see specific weeks, or do we want to see the month at a glance? So now we're gonna add our event. To get started, let's view our calendar by month rather than day or week. Select any day for our event and just click on that day. Once we do so, you'll see that a pop-up window appears where we can add additional details for this event. First thing to do is to add the name for the event. Select a name that's short, preferably, because sometimes it will be cut off, as you're already seeing here on my screen, but something that is meaningful to other members. Then we're gonna click Edit the event to add additional details. Here we could change the date if we accidentally clicked on the wrong day. Uh, we can also change the duration of the event. We can add a location, description, or even attachments if say there's a handout attendees will need. We can click on the add time option to specify the start and end time of the event, or we can indicate that the event runs all day. In the description of the event, we could add an agenda if it's a meeting, add a list of materials people need to bring if it's an activity, or provide background on the purpose of the meeting. Right now, of course, with everyone doing meetings online, you could also include, say, the Zoom or Skype login information for your meeting so people have ready access to it at meeting start time. Now, before we click Save, though, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the event is saving to our correct calendar. By default, events are going to fill on your personal calendar, but in this case, that's not what we want. To change from our personal calendar to the group calendar we created earlier, we're gonna to wanna to click the drop-down list at the bottom of the event window and select the new group calendar you created. Once you've completed the calendar with this event, for example, uh, we can share it with others on our team or our group. The advantage of sharing a calendar with others is that it does make it easier to coordinate a lot of things. You could let club members know about upcoming meetings, you could let family members know about the after-school activity schedule, or you could even make sure you block off time to take the family car. To share the calendar with others, we're gonna to wanna to click on that three dot icon here next to the group calendar we created. This is our options button. From there, we're gonna to wanna to click on the settings and sharing option. You notice we do have a number of other options, including to change the color coding if we so choose. Now we can enter an email address for each person we want to share our calendar with. Once we've shared our calendar, we can now set the appropriate permissions for what we want them to be able to do with our newly created calendar. If we want them to be able to edit our calendar, we can give them permission to make changes to events. If we only want them to be able to see events but not make changes, we can just say, see all event details. This ensures that we're only giving access to people that we trust and feel confident won't go in and change all our events around on us. Now a calendar with only one event on it really isn't too much of a calendar at all. So from here, we're gonna to wanna to add additional events to our calendar, say meetings, training, celebrations. Again, we're gonna to wanna to select a date and schedule the event. If we're using Google Hangouts, we can actually add the conferencing information directly to the event. Remember though, we could always add other products links, such as Zoom, Skype, you name it, directly into the description box. Then of course, we're gonna to want to invite our group and save the event. Now let's take a look at it from the other side. So this is what a recipient will see when you invite them to an event from your Google Calendar. So you'll notice that they have received an email uh, this is displaying as if they were uh, accessing it in Gmail itself, uh, but of course you'd be able to invite them regardless of their email address. Once they open this email, they'll have the option to respond to your invitation, including saying yes, they'll be able to attend, no they won't, or maybe, depending on their schedule. 
If you've given them edit permissions, they also may be able to suggest an alternative time if they're not able to make the meeting as scheduled. All right, we're just about out of time for today, but I hope you're feeling more comfortable with Google Calendar. In this short workshop, we've already created a new calendar, shared the calendar, and practiced adding new events. Now remember that Google Calendar is not the only app that Google offers either. Once you feel comfortable with Google Calendar, you may also want to explore Forms, which is a great way to make surveys to collect feedback from others, Google Slides, which I'm currently using to display a presentation, Google Hangouts, which is a video conferencing tool, or Google Sites, which lets you create a free basic website. This is a very basic overview of Google Calendar, but I hope you've seen a way that you could use it either at work or at home. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember that the Turner Free Library has begun to offer contactless curbside pickup. So if you do have library materials you'd like to put on hold, please feel free to give us a call at 781-961-0932. We're so excited to see everyone again. Bye-bye.